Ladies and gentlemen, and all the Norks out there currently watching from the comfort of their secret man caves, it's high time we followed up on our promise and begin commentating on our next big trilogy, courtesy of the Skylander Makers. What is for Blob? Blob? <laughs> Hi, Bob. You are no longer allowed to insult these people ever again, Internet. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, remember when Spyro looked like this? Now he looks like this. Oh. Which is so nice. James, I guess, will put up the images when he does. So... Should get around to it that the second the Insane Trilogy came out, there's always been a rumor going on of they have to do something. And with Spyro, yeah. A couple years later, they finally follow through. <laughs> yep, with the Spyro Reignited Trilogy, pretty much released on um, the exact same consoles as the Insane Trilogy. Though, um, at first we only got this on the PS4 and Xbox One. Though, as of recently, it's also Show been confirmed off. to be put on the... <laughs> yeah. Anyway, as of recently, this game's also been confirmed to be put on the PC and the Nintendo Switch. <laughs> Yay! Like, like, let's be real here. We all knew that it was going to be coming out on the, on those consoles as well. It just it was only a matter of time. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, welcome to the original trilogy from the PlayStation era, revitalized. Which I'm just going to say right now, as much as I de genuinely loved Crash 2, I am. I've always been more of a Spyro person with all the gameplay and collectathon stuff. Mm. Spyro is an easier series to get into, I think. Wake up! <laughs> In a matter of speaking, yes. But of course, we're not starting with Spyro 2. We're starting with Spyro 1, where, st where, we're, where we start off in the world of dragons. And you can thank me later for putting on subtitles. Yeah, because we are going to be talking over it. Yep. That's also a thing that they added just recently, the whole subtitles thing. Yeah, there's been, a, there's been an update that... I guess this update also severely like improved the compression. Oh, by the way... This blue dragon is the reason all this happens, and you'll see why. Let's see. Meanwhile, in that nasty Nork's secret man cave. <laughs> no threat? Oh. <laughs> if he had kept his double damn mouth shut, he would have yeah. avoided all of this. Yeah. Well, how are they supposed to know that even Norks can watch the dragon channel? Don't. Oh, Jesus. Wow. How did that their laser can reach five worlds over. Wow. Fortunately for Spyro, he's too small to be hit by the hit by his little crystal laser there, so he's the one that's gonna save the day. Yay! Of course. Welcome to Spyro One. The adventure begins. So yeah, we should uh, get around to this. So James, first I guess we should talk about what is our main objective here. Our main objective is as followed. Free all the dragons currently trapped in crystal. I think there are about eighty of them. Uh, Give or take. speaking, yes. Mm -hmm. I think so, yeah. Also, oh. holy damn, look at it. Look at that update in the dragon designs. Oh, it looks so good. Hey, Husbo. Free ten dragons. <laughs> yeah, we should talk about this. That's going to be Pi's catchphrase for the next 79 dragons. So, because that's something I should say. <laughs> Me too. Uh, Me too. Oh, and uh, that is SpongeBob returning to Spyro. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's all I can tell you. And, but, yeah, and, game, he, he actually, and, and honestly, from my personal experience, I'm kind of grateful that Tom Kenny upped his game big time since the original trilogy. Like, he actually sounds very charismatic here. He does. Yeah, I mean, well, well basically, because uh, I actually went and saw him speak at, at this year's Comic Fest in Arizona. Yay. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, yeah, he was talking about how he was able to recreate his past voice uh, for Spyro. Like, <laughs> he even joked, like, he, he couldn't make him sound like... Uh, like an old spiral, like, yeah, hey, look at that sparks. It's uh, it ripped those. Uh, ripped those because he can't. It looks like I have to come yeah, out of retirement. It. Looks like I gotta come out of retirement for this one last job. Anyway, uh, sorry, what were you saying earlier, Hype, with the dragons? Well, I think you were about to touch on it, but I guess I could touch on upon it in a bigger scale. The yeah. biggest update that they did to the first game is with the dragons because all the dragons in the first game were basically just like three models recolored 80 times. In this game, every dragon, and I do mean every dragon, has their own unique, artistically well-done design all for themselves. <laughs> Different voices, and just it's so crazy, and that that's why Gwee and Pyre are probably going to be just kind of squeeing in the corner for half of this oh, yeah. <laughs> All for you two. As, yeah. as, a, as an artist who loves dragons, like, every Ooh. single one of these dragons Ooh. looks amazing. They all look they all look e amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, e amazing. And it should really, it really should stand as a testament because, like, now that we have more personalized looks for these right. dragons, it really gives... Spyro won a whole lot more charm than it did previously, and I mean, mm -hmm. I speak as someone who mostly had the most, well, 
for lack of a better word, enthusiasm for Spiral One, just because I kind of like, kind of, kind of prefer more the idea that we're in a world that's inhabited by people of our own kind. Mm -hmm. And here they just brought it to its logical conclusion. And even, also, and another thing of the Re Night trilogy, these guys fellas actually talk. Mm -hmm. Yep, and also those platforms that James was jumping on earlier, that's supposed to be a secret he's not supposed to know for another world or two, but <laughs> it's, but I mean, you, I mean, this game can let you experiment with whatever you want. Here's a one-up. Oh. He's dead. Huh. We've taken its life. But, Yay! um, so I, so, <laughs> uh, another soul great, for a soul. Huh. Much. another great thing that I think that this game has brought forth with all this is just so much more, like, visual clarity and, like, because oh yeah, because I, I, I'll argue. I feel like this trilogy got far more. Wow, you earned it, James. By an <laughs> yeah, I totally did, and that's honestly one other thing that uh, the Reignite trilogy do does. Um, um, the original Spyro One did not have um, skill points. That wouldn't be a thing until Spyro Two. But for the Reignite trilogy, not only did they make it more obvious that you can that you get skill points in this game, but um, they actually added skill points to Spyro One. Oh. And there's a reward for getting them all in, in every game. Mm -hmm. And I will say this right now to save save on a little bit of frustration. Uh, we are not going after the skill points in this game, at least not actively. Yeah. All they really do is just give you concept art, Aww. which is Pretty cool. Much. But uh, but yeah, we should say. Yeah, as I was saying, I feel like even more so than the Insane trilogy, I think the Spyro Reignited trilogy earned so much cool. more. They earn so, mm -hmm. so much more credit. They earn so much more from this reimagining, just because. I mean, for all it's worth, with Crash 1, 2, and 3 on the original PlayStation, everything was still more or less well-defined. Like, you could tell what was what. Spyro, because of the speed that you're moving around and the far more, like, open-world aspect of it, because you have to control, because you could have full control of the camera back then. Mm -hmm. They had to have really simplified designs to compensate for how big the worlds were. Mm -hmm. It was super abstract. Like, for example, the uh, our enemies for this game, the Norks, um, in the original game, they looked like very giant green blobs. Here they Much. look a little more like, well, ogres. Yep. See, no, yeah. Oh, hey, Thomas. That's a... Hey, uh, Thomas. Doesn't look at all... Doesn't look at all like hey, what all the modern <laughs> stuff present him as, but he's my favorite dragon. Hmm. Aww. He looks like a classic bard. He does. He's a barb dragon. Plummeting into prehistoric glaciers? Wow. Oh, that. <laughs> cool. I love, how, I love how expressive the animations are, have gotten, just like. It, it, oh, it I shows, agree. It, it shows how, how far technology's really come. And that's yeah, also, like, that's just another thing. Like, we give Toys for Bob a lot of flack for what they've done with Spyro, but in a lot of their games, and even in Skylanders, they usually are pretty good about, like, character animation and expression, and it definitely shows here. Yeah. yeah. Right. What was that, James? Like, honestly, say what you will about Toys for Bob, but you can't say they aren't professionals at what they do. Yep. Even if sometimes the things they do are a little questionable, but this eh. is definitely not one of those cases. And welcome, yeah. to, just... welcome to James Plays a DreamWorks movie. Pretty much, yes. Yeah. We're Isn't literally that what we like, said about Crash. Well, actually, maybe a more I think a better way of saying it would be like playing Crash Insane is playing a DreamWorks movie. This is literally playing a Pixar flick. Oh, that's fair. Yeah, fair enough. Much. Because yeah, j yeah, just as we were all touching upon, I feel like the it's a far more night and day comparison with how the original looked to where we are now, and I love it. Mm -hmm. it and then these and, games... and it should really go without saying, like as someone who, I mean. There we go. I do like the Spiral games all well, fine enough, but I always felt they were kind of a, they were kind of a far cry compared to the compared to the Crash series, which I strongly preferred more. But with the yeah. Reignite trilogy, I mean, I still love the effing heck out of um, the Insane trilogy. But like, this is easily my preferred way to play Spyro now, like bar none. Oh yeah, between Insane and Reignited, these are now the definitive ways to play these games, and it's still again very appreciated that they're bringing them to the standard. And not even just because of, well, how great it looks, I would also argue how well it controls, too, because the original Spyro trilogy, like, bless its soul for what it tried to do for its time, nowadays it's actually a little um, on the loose side. Mm -hmm. Here they tighten it up very, very well. To oh, a point where, it, honestly, Spyro feels, feels much tighter to control, if not more so than Crash in the Insane trilogy. And, of course, there are certain quality of life uh, improvements, such as what James uh, start, tried doing there at first, but he had already completed the level, so there was no need. I don't remember when it first started. My first remember, my first memory of it was in Enter the Dragonfly after you beat the game. But uh, oh, if you push in the L, if you push in the left analog stick or the L3 button, 
uh, Sparks will detect where the nearest gem is to help those uh, completionists out there. Mm -hmm. If I'm not mistaken, that was a thing that started with Spyro 3. So yeah, so they added, so they retroact, so they retrofitted that for the other games, which just again makes it so much like less frust. They, they they really just made the game fun to play. It helps too, considering the fact that like considering how much more detailed the, the backgrounds are, the gems can can become locked within all that luscious scenery. Mm -hmm. So that's really where Sparks shines. And the even and the best part is you have this right from the get go. Even in Spyro Three, like you don't even have to worry about but unlocking it through uh, certain means. Oh, uh, hello there, yeah. Tech Wizard. Weren't you the guy that caused all this in the first place? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much insulted our greatest enemy. I bleed the faith. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, oh, oh, uh, would you look at the time? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you really should have... You, you should have really watched the timing on when you called them ugly. Just saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ugly! <laughs> I just does it! It's if I'm not so mistaken, I think that's the same actor from Hero's Tale. Hmm. Oh, that's awesome. Actually, I don't know. In, in Hero's Tale, he sounded more nasally, like, I need to get my... I need to step well, up my game. Well, it could be the same actor, but with a different voice. That's Maybe. true. I mean, you can, we could always look that up later. And, oh, hey, old hey, master. After you've freed all the dragons, pass through this Isn't that Tom as well? Vortex, uh, um, I don't that. think so. You like, I'm sure Tom voices a few other characters. Home. I don't know if he's ever but any first, of the dragons. Let me tell other dragons, story. yeah. No, thanks. See ya. Whoop. Well, okay then. <laughs> Doesn't even bother trying to actually walk away. It's just like I, I can't see you anymore. Also, I mean, you don't have to do this do this with all the dragons, but it always help. It's always nice to actually watch as they fly up into a into a yeah. into a flash of light. Oh, they, oh yeah, they have their own them, animations some too. Some have some funny um, outros when they leave. It's mm -hmm. just really oh, key, nice. Hello. It's just what really do? really nice. They unlock a. Uh, special treasure chests that uh, have usually a bunch of gems in them. Oh, I guess uh, we should stop. Uh, oh, we should stop oh, freaking Gasman over how the game looks. How does the game control, James? I already said earlier. I think this game controls like a dream. No, no, no I mean, I mean like the actual actual controls, like oh, what we can what do. Oh, what you actually stuff. gotta do. Okay, so um, for those that have never played a platformer before, you can press the cross button to jump. You can hold down the square button to uh, do do your little horde. Your little horn dash there. Uh, mm -hmm. Circle is how you use your flame, and you can also do that by hold, pressing on the uh, right trigger. Hey, guys. Also, also, I gotta admit, I actually like the design of this guy. He's a cappuccino rooster. He's, uh. He's a goth cappuccino hipster. With a blue stash. Oh, he's got some tattoos. Damn, that's hot. <laughs> <laughs> Checking the pants. This is his muscle. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, and so there's the there are the key chests. Uh, the Don't. What, we'll, what we'll basically what we'll mainly learn as our form of combat in a later stage is that uh, big enemy. You do not doubt Spyro's fire breath, even though he is very small. It can take out almost anything in one hit. Mm -hmm. Anything except for enemies coated in metal, which you think would be even more effective. But yeah, like that would cook them freaking hot. Great shot there. Do, 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 don't do, do, don't do, 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 do. <laughs> You screwed up. Yes, I hit them. I hit them. Oh. <laughs> but, yeah, you, but yeah, you need to charge. Yeah, you can only charge. You have to charge through things that are metal. And as we'll, it won't I become an issue until it won't become the an ram. issue until much much later in the game. But if you're charging through something, it also needs to be relatively smaller or as can't be bigger than you. Right. Charging through something bigger than you isn't going to work. Also, just since James is doing roasting all the wildlife in here. Sorry. Oh, no, that's fine. Right. Since James is roasting a whole lot of wildlife here, I guess I should stress, um, uh, yeah, I'll just keep talking. Oh, he's on. Sparks yeah, he's on. here is basically our health. Like, the color of him kind of indicates your health. If you want to restore his health, burn any wildlife you see, they will spew out dragonflies from their corpse, and he can eat those Butterflies. Butterflies. But that's, what that's what I meant to say. Sparks is not a cannibal. <laughs> oh, hey, painter. Oh, I like this guy. Ooh, it's a spirit animal. Honestly, look. Honestly, it looks like he could pass up for Glee's father. <laughs> spirit animal. My dad's a musician. Wait, yeah, the, the the dragon form's father. Gwendra's father. I don't know. I don't know. Oh well, Gwendra, as in like my right. tail that, persona. Yeah. <laughs> well, not Which Gwendra. Ah, I got I got all the things mixed up. I thought Gwendra was the actual dragon. Yeah, form. I know. I, I, I make it confusing because I'm not very creative with my personas. No, it's oh, just yeah. the names. It's just the names. Anywho's oh, nothing of it. I can't try Persona way too much, so... Now, real quick, just imagine this kind of... Oh, I was about to say my thing, but then I suddenly noticed Egg Thief! And oh. by the way, skill point, if you put if you burn that little uh, rosebud. 
So yeah, um, as we chase, chase down this obnoxious little leg thief, um, imagine, just picture this level back as it was in the PS1 original. What? Oh. I pay no mind as he falls to his death. <laughs> it's probably all flat. Just, yeah, it looks all flat, none of this grassy detail, and I'm pretty certain that a lot of it would look very blobbish. Yep. And then here we are. It's just so great. I mean, it also goes without saying that the draw distance has been increased significantly since the original days, too. Also, so you can actually um, see how the surroundings are. Since we kind of talked over it, we should probably explain why exactly we have to hunt down those thieves who stole those eggs. Oh, they never actually explained the story, I don't think, up until later. Uh, there is a dragon you meet up with later who tells you that, well, there's thieves that stole, that stole the dragon eggs. And, of course, if you want to beat the game, you gotta, you do need to save a few of them, because, um, the thing about those balloonists is that, um, each one has a certain objective for you to clear before you can move on to the next world. Like, for example, with our first balloonist, we have to save about ten dragons. Mm -hmm. And then, by the time we get to our second world, we gotta collect a certain amount of gems, and then by the third world, we gotta collect this many, many eggs, and so on and so forth. Ah, gotcha. Okay. Ah, there we go. Look for sparklies. What's funny is that, I think, um, egg thieves are only in the first three worlds. Afterwards, like, say if you got every, every one of them by the third game, that's literally all they wrote. Oh, yeah, because they have no more, like, need for that requirement. Right. Pretty much. And it'll definitely be in the, uh, I think the second or third world. I think it's around the... No, no, sorry. It's the third world that they really start cranking heavy on the thieves because that's where the requirements need. Okay, right. Thanks, and, um, I will say it's not nearly as bad as how much they expected out of, like, if you were playing the ban uh, Banjo-Kazooie and how many jiggies and whatnot you needed just to get to the final yeah. boss. Yeah. It's huh. not that bad, but you can, but you, yeah. <laughs> um, it's not that bad, but you still do need to um, be on the lookout for dragons because they do expect you to get at least around half of them, if not more mm -hmm. so. Right. Yep. Uh, and of course, as you no doubt saw earlier, um, we got our we got these little um, portals that take us home. Uh, fun fact: uh, if you want to get to the first boss of this game, you actually do need to take a portal home because right. for some reason the game checks if you actually went through one before it opens up the portal to the boss. Yeah, that's actually a good thing that I was going to say. Yeah, good thing you mentioned that because the other thing I was going to mention is that if at any point you've completed a level, ah, it's the dragon. <laughs> if, at any, if at any point you've completed yeah, you a level, mm -hmm. you can at any point in time hit pause and select exit stage, and you'll keep everything that you've collected and just get out of there quickly. Uh, the Real other... quick, want to know something funny? You want to know something funny that happened while I was um, play doing a test run of Spiral One? Was it? I actually got one of those norks stuck on those three pillars around the uh, top left portion of the oh. map. Really? And it was just shivering in fear as I was just leering at him. Like so. <laughs> of course, I showed him a little bit of mercy, and then after I licked some of the fleas off my arm, I burnt him to a crisp. Yay! You can also mess around in these loading screens. Um, yeah. Oh, his arms. One I, other love, I love the animation. Reach for that extra gem! I can't get the gem! Oh, one other thing uh, that is useful with Sparks, if you haven't already you know, noticed it by now, is that not only is he our health, but also... Uh, what he also is kind of like a magnet for gems nearby, which is right. the reason why we would like to keep him alive because it just makes it easier than having to pick up every other thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah, once Sparks is gone, you got to pick all that stuff up manually. Which Fire is him! Not the worst thing in the world, but it. Oh, uh, okay, I don't know why, why I'm having such a hard time. You were toying time. with him. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I may as well have been doing that because he looks so fidgety. Yeah. yeah. Well, oh, of course, we got the big brutes now. That's a nice piece of turkey him. you got there. Oh, oh Jesus! Here, let me try your meat for you. Or you? There you go. <laughs> do, do. But, yeah. Uh, what else was I gonna say? You know, I wonder if Spyro ever wonders what Nork meat tastes like. Mm -hmm. I, I wonder. Mm -hmm. Considering they're made from gems, I don't know. Hey, Albin. Oh, it's you. I wasn't sure if you. Oh, he's a writer. Annoying little creatures. Mm -hmm. Of course, they wouldn't bother me. Says the guy that got crystallized. Paint. Their metal armor is fireproof. But a charge attack will take care Just of them. With I, all these NPCs well, and the fact that any of them are probably optional at any given time, but they give them full on like animate, like it's so nice and smooth and die. It and, actually makes yeah. it makes it worthwhile to actually no. free them and well, I'm just gonna I'm, it's because each of them has a unique personality, not just in like their mannerisms, but in how they're designed. Uh, like, right. Like, and like they're you they're, go ahead, they're, I'm they're sorry. sorry. Just wanted to sorry. Just wanted to add that, don't, yeah, just each, each of their designs is uh, has a distinct personality to it. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna ask this right now: How many of us here also believe that Spyro literally has around seventy plus dragon fathers? 
I'm I do. And I was I always <laughs> assumed that these were all just like I always assumed that these were all just like his brothers, and he's just the runt of the litter. I could see that too. Yeah. I I, I prefer the idea that they're all his dragon daddies. <laughs> Or maybe they're all his uncles. Oh, like an no actor. A Shakespearean, if you will. But a quick play. That How morbid he's holding his father's skull. <laughs> yeah. Assuming but, it's uh, his father's. But but it's also like, that's another thing, is that like, okay, we see... Actually, hold on, Logan, let me add, add on to that. How dare you? This is my great-great-grandfather's skull. Oh. Uh, <laughs> totally different. His, his name was Horatio. Yes. Also, I love... <laughs> Also, just to add into how much detail they put into the first game, I love how they changed this to look like an actual library. Yeah. God. They added some onto these pillars and stuff, and oh my god, yeah. I mean, okay, can we just? It's an it's a point I argue. It's a point I would argue when you compare between the other two games, but especially with eighty some on dragons, I feel like Spiral One got the most like tender love and care out of all the other things when they are remastering them. Well, I think it's kind of the reason that is is kind of not dissimilar ah, sparks. to how yeah, and lazy. No. Mm. I was about to say I think the reason that is is because it's kind of a case that's not completely dissimilar to Spyro One in a. You mean ah, sorry, one? that's what I meant. I don't know what my mind is today. Oh, metal belly. Hey, buddy, your bum's exposed. Oh, thanks. Donk. <laughs> oh, my bad. Yes, I killed me. But I was about to say, like, I think the reason the first game got the most love and care is that it's kind of in a not completely dissimilar case to Crash 1, nice. where that, you know, as we all know, Crash 1 is arguably the game that got the most love for the Insane Trilogy. I feel like it's the same excuse here where they thought that they, that the first game is the one that kind of needed the most polish-ups. Mm, that's right. fair. Yeah, well, because it is the oldest. Mm -hmm. How old is Spyro? Yeah, I would, I would... Definition. And I do, and I do agree that I think Spiral One between the two just got the most tender love and care because, like, let's not kid ourselves. Like, it was like the first of its first of the trilogy, and well, as such, it just it, it helped to him add a little bit more pizzazz to it all, mm -hmm. Ooh, make it just as worthwhile to play as the others. Use the action button when you want to zoom in and look around. All your secrets. It is. Me. Ultimately useless, and you never will use this ever in the game. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but cool design. But hey, our, your secret's safe with me. Yep. Hey <laughs> Hunter, want to hear a secret? <laughs> you'll never have to. You'll never have to think. Of, you'll never have to worry about using that until the, the sequels. Oops. But I'll. <laughs> you hide the uh, Yeah. But yeah, I mean, the fact that you're getting first off. This alone, I would pay forty dollars for this entire like game thing here. But the fact yes. that we get this plus two others, the game just give keeps on giving. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm yeah, I, I definitely want to get this now. Yeah, I, I'm I'm anxiously waiting for the Switch release. That that's in September, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, literally, I think it's coming out in like early September. I'm nice. I'm still I'm still curious to see what changes they have to make in order for it to work on Switch, similar to what happened with Insane, making Crash less fluffy. One thing I did notice is that the dynamic lighting was very, was very much diminished, but to make up for it, the colors are all more saturated. Okay, so it's like a cuphead sort of thing, maybe. Sort of. Exactly. Hmm. Okay, I mean that could that could still work as long as, long as it yeah. feels and controls right. I think that should still. Did, work. Does the Switch version also get rid of that motion blur? Because I know that that's a a, a pretty sizable issue people have with this. Game. Um, it I believe I want to say it does, and and to add on to that, that's actually another thing that they um fixed with the um update. Not only can you turn on subtitles, you can also turn off the motion blur when you're turning around. Ah. Ah, and thankfully, I was and thankfully with my file, I did turn it off, so you don't have to worry about that yourselves. Even though I mean, not one of those few people that never was bothered by it. That doesn't bother me too much, but but again, the quality of life stuff they added is nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and again, it's it's just nice that they're doing all this just in time to release this on everything else. Mm -hmm. And just ima just imagine what'll happen once this also comes out on PC and all the modding support. Oh, oh yes. I'm already see again. I'm already seeing people for the Insane Trilogy modding in complete like twin sanity levels into it or working on it. And that looks amazing. Mm -hmm. So I can't wait to see if they try. I can't wait to see if they can pull off Heroes Tale stuff. Oh man, that'll be interesting. But on that note, ladies and gentlemen, we're not quite done with the Artisan's Homeworld just yet. Stay tuned for the next part where we uh, meet up with something quite toasty. Ooh. Toasty. Oh. Bye, everybody. Till Bye. next time, guys. Oh, the husbands are mine. Now they're mine. You know, you make that joke about them modding in a lot of stuff for Spyro. Just watch, someone's going to be dense enough to mod in Legends of Spyro, Spyro in there. <laughs>